Oh, I forgot to hit the other button. Hey, okay, we're live. Hey, hello, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the Undesirable Show, Season Six, Episode Two. Today we are joined by two squares having a fight uh, down in the box below us here. <laughs> Gods, it's a certain troll that everyone likes, and uh, you know. Hopefully we get this sorted out pretty soon, but uh, either way. <laughs> yeah, we, we thought we'd actually allow you to see the face of Cheech. Oh, God. Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, that might get the stream shut down. <laughs> Which one? Yeah, exactly. Well... <laughs> Uh, but it's definitely not the one that lives in Scotland and pushes trolleys for a living. <laughs> uh, welcome in, everyone. Hope you have uh, had a good weekend so far. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Oh, all right. Hopefully he gets that sorted out in a second here. If he messages me, we'll know something's wrong. Um, But, yeah. Uh, there were at least three Cheeches. Oh, do you think it was a team of, of Cheeches? Like, do you reckon, like, there was just, like, a whole group of people just trying to mess with, like, the streams? Or was it just one person that was just a dickhead? Oh, there were, there was multiple Cheeches. It started with one. And yeah. And then it got dickheads trying to copy him. Oh, my God. And it, it ended up with uh, an army of them. An army of Cheeches. Mm -hmm. No chongs. No chongs. <laughs> no, no, no chongs. Not a chong in sight. Uh, he's not a team. One of them didn't want what happened. I suspect the first one. Interesting. Why do I feel like Dire Thing has all of their IP addresses? <laughs> <laughs> Dire Thing, if you want, just uh, point the ICBMs right there. <laughs> I feel like Dire Thing would be a really good uh, scam baiter. You ever see those videos, Mike? Yes, I have seen them. Oh, man. Working on Insta posts. CC coils. Nice. Not you know what? I, I wonder. Ooh, Dire, there's a thing that we could potentially put together. Is there a way to get someone's latest like Instagram posts and have them just like as a browser source? Honestly, you could probably just do it by copying the URL and just putting it in as a browser source and then just cropping it down so that it always shows the latest post of that person. Because that we could use that for our advertisements, you know, for the, the sponsors, our lovely, gracious sponsors of the show, CC Coils. Don't forget to use the code. Who needs underpants for 25% off? He's graciously running a, a sweet deal if you guys need coils. And also, uh, Jane, aka Shy Tots, aka, uh, I never remember the name of her skincare natural thing, natural skincare. That's the one. Um, graciously sponsoring the show as well. You could use the code, what's your favorite cheese for. Was it 50? 20% off? Yeah. 20% off. Still haven't changed the logo. What logo? Yep. Which logo? My logo? This logo? Or your logo? Did you change your logo? I think. You're, what the hell was that, Mike? Jesus Christ. That was my ass. Oh, God, run! Everyone, run! Good Lord! Oh. Yes, stream, stream elements or steam out stream elements has it right. <laughs> the first one I did was a joke. Now it's real. Oh. <laughs> but um. Yeah, it's been on form this week. <laughs> what are you eating, Mike? Uh, well, Monday I had chipotle pulled pork. Oh, that'll do it. Tuesday. I had a pizza smothered in chipotle sauce. 
What did oh, I have Wednesday? Oh. Wednesday was a madras. Hey. It's a madras. It's a curry. Oh, okay. Oh. Sensing a theme. <laughs> yeah. Gas makers. Yeah. I swear you do this yeah. on purpose. Gas makers and... Put it this way, what what I've eaten throughout the week has set my gastritis off as well. Oh. Uh, well, I wonder why. <laughs> See, yeah, and plus the fact the antibiotics ain't helping the things either. They set off my gastritis anyway. Oh. Oh, Mike. <laughs> yeah, shit happens. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, CC coils and sprouts. No, I've not had no sprouts. No sprouts? No beans? No, no, no beans either. Oh, hang on, did I? Yes, I did. I had beans Monday when I was at the cafe. Ah. See, there it is. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit more expensive than a penny breakfast, though. Try a £10 breakfast. £10 breakfast? What? Not in weight, in monetary wise. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, it could be either. <laughs> well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> Good job, the Germans are still working on the final solution. Oh, my God. <laughs> They would hire you, Mike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be the only only Jewish Nazi. Ten quid though for a, a breakfast. Yeah. In this economy, that's quite cheap. Really? Well, for London prices, anyway. I uh, I'm, dude, there was a little calf by like a, a real greasy spoon right by the uh, event hall thing that we went to that was only five quid oh, no, but it was bad. the previous day mm, it was it or was even okay. the previous week <laughs> oh, I don't think it was that bad I, I like a good greasy spoon that was the best breakfasts like we'd be strapped to the underside of a measure schmidt with baked bean funnel <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh man. Yep. Whole new <laughs> war crime definition of crop dusting. <laughs> I was gonna say I've I've heard of the um cluster bombs, but not the pebble dashing bombs. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> but uh, are you saying about Diafig and the computing? I, I reckon he would do well as uh, counter terrorism in um, cybercrime. I mean, we've already uh, established that that is the case. He is uh, part of a three letter agency and uh, he keeps the world together. Dire thing. Mm -hmm. One man, you know, hacker, elite. Oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to get through uh, tech difficulties here. Sort of do a PNG tour. Would you do a show? <gasps> oh, well, he's got a no. He doesn't even need a PNG tuber. All he's got is do that matrix filter that he's got. He, I, Mike, you were there for that, right? When oh, Dyer. Oh, Dire Thing has like this filter that turns him into the Matrix. Like it's all like characters, like like numbers and letters and stuff, and okay. like it uses the camera to like turn it into. Oh, it's crazy, all in real time. Wild. Okay. Now, which pill would you take, the red or the blue? Ooh, there's a good thought process there. What if you take them both? Um, I would probably take and I'd take the red pill. <laughs> I'll I'll escape this reality. We are living in a simulation anyways, so what what's the point? 
Yeah. I'll just take the pill that makes me high. <laughs> what would make you higher, though, you think? Like, okay, so, okay, okay. Let's weigh the differences here, right? Blue pill, go back to your normal reality. You live a, a life, you do your job, you, you, you have dreams and aspirations, and, you know, it's kind of boring and mundane, but it's stable. You get to eat the food that you enjoy, you get to do the things that you like, and, you know, everything's sort of, like, normal to our sense of reality. On the other hand, the red pill leads you down a rabbit hole and shows you the real world as it is. You don't get to enjoy any good food. It's basically just paste that with no flavor, but just pure nutrients. And then you have the constant war between man versus machine slash technology. And like, you, it's pain and suffering. But you get the added bonus of getting a big spike jammed in the back of your neck and you have the ability to fly and, you know, shoot guns and do cool superhero shit. Yeah, I think I'd be taking the uh, firing the big guns. Okay. I mean, I would do it just, uh, just to have a sense of groundedness really with myself because I, I you know, I've all, you know, you always see these things, you know, deja vu and all that. Mm -hmm. It just like makes you think that we're like living in a simulation. And I really feel like uh, it's it's we're the, the reality that we live in that we occupy is not the real reality, you know? So it's like yeah. if you were unplugged from the Matrix and like all of a sudden you're like in the real reality and you're like, oh, OK, well, this makes sense. We definitely did this. Yeah, I think I'd still rather have the real reality. Well, yeah. Plus superhero shit. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I have a lot of stuff I s is sorted. I might stream some uh, of the Twitch automations. Ooh. What I never understood about those movies is if all the important actions are taken in the simulation and they can't inject subroutines into the simulation, why would they never alter, uh, alter the parameters in their favor because it's a movie and it would be really boring if someone goes enter okay solved did it it's because if you think about it in like computer terms right like the smiths the agents they are like a virus and they take over your computer program i realize they're in Dyer's mind, he's thinking logically, like, okay, well, you run a you run a virus scan, you get rid of the malware, you get to the, and I'm like, movie, but the Smiths are and like a go on. I was gonna say, and plus the facts, AI thinks a lot quicker than a man does, or a human does. Typically, <clears throat> we're we're running into a problem now with uh, with AI infecting itself, right? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, we don't think of these things right off the bat when we invent them. But a couple years down the line, all of a sudden you're like, oh, shit, what happens when everything is AI generated and all we get is remixing of the AI generation? Like, what is that going to be? It's just going to be mush. Mm -hmm. And because, like, you got to remember what AI is going after is a decade's worth of Internet. You know, there, there's like petabytes of internet out there and what? petabytes not pedobytes no <laughs> i've never heard of petabytes at peta p oh yeah okay. there's like a lot of data that's out there for uh for the internet from the internet and it's all user generated it's all what we upload to it <laughs> so at the end of the day everything that gets a little wonky is because of us so like if if an ai doesn't know how to spell out words it's because of us if ai can't mimic styles it's because of us there's not enough information about that style out there so yeah um 
I mean, we're getting there. I think what it needs to do is we need to go further back into history and like make sure that the information that we give the internet is valid. And then second of all, I would say like if we narrow down what gets kind of clustered into what AI is is pulling from, you know, so we ignore certain sites and we, you know, target a little bit more and focus it a little bit more rather than just going, make me a pretty flower, you know, and just have it analyze 30 billion th flowers that are, you know, on the Internet pictures and then just kind of like make something that looks like a flower. Mm. But yeah. <clears throat> In all, in all fairness to the Matrix movies, you know, their whole thing was that, you know, they're working with what they got. They have these ships that they, like, put together and build and, like, they're hovercrafts. So they use, like, this propulsion that, that keeps it levitated off the ground, which is littered with, like, old machine junk, essentially, after the ruins of man. You know, like, essentially, society as a whole has crumbled and there's not many humans left and the machines are taking over. It's it's very similar to a short story by a science fiction author. Uh, it's called I Have No Mouth, But I Must Scream. No, I don't one. You should check it out. It's very good. Very good. Um, it's, you'd love it, Mike. There's torture, human suffering. Oh, it's great. Oh, <laughs> So this brief synopsis of this uh, short story is that the computers have we, we gave the computer the ability to think AI. The, this was written in like 50s or 60s. I want to say this was written a long time before computing was even a, a thing, like a big thing. So we gave the computers the ability to think for themselves and do things like by themselves without our, our you know, meddling. The computer then, therefore, decided that, well, if I can do things myself and I know everything, what's the point of having humans around? So they basically try to eradicate humans and they cluster together. So these computers and, and machines build things, these structures, to get each computer that has this, like, learning technique available to it to attach itself to each other. And eventually, there's, like, these, like, miles-long warehouses and, like, big buildings and stuff that connect one computer to another one and then eventually there's just a, a thing that uh basically goes over the top of the entire earth <laughs> so when we have the thing that goes over the entire earth uh it's like a dome it keeps the sunlight out it's just men it's like well artificial everything and this computer starts capturing the, the rest of humanity and like torturing it for its own amusement because it thinks it's funny that humans are so little soft squishy things that are so you know they're they're a cancer it thinks that it's a virus and it's a cancer so it just messes with humans in order to get rid of them mm -hmm. and then eventually there's only like a, a very small group of humans left and these humans are kept alive artificially too by the the computer in order to entertain itself, just to give it something to do. And like, so it gives it like medicine and it lets it heal and everything in between, like what it just decides to like torture it or whatever to torture the human. And these humans are, since they're pumped full of drugs and steroids and everything else all the time, they're like mutated into like this, like, you know, kind of monsterish kind of creatures. And like, they decide that they need to like try to find a way out and uh it's very dark and grim when they start trying to do this because the uh, well what's the only way out of a, a situation like that the computer will not let them die no matter what and it sees that whatever they do so they have to be sneaky about it and they have to find a way to push their own off buttons without the computer knowing because the computer if it knows what they're up to then it would keep them alive nuts but really good uh, short story definitely re recommend uh, reading it if you have 
you know, an hour or two. It's not oh, well, super well, long. Well, yeah, it's not super long. Um, and you could definitely find like either videos or something like that. Like you could probably find like an audio book for free, no problem. Or if you want to actually like re sit there and read it, pretty sure I, I might be able to grab a link and put it, post it in the, uh, the discord. But yeah, oh. it's human. It's just a very interesting concept. And I feel like that's a lot like what the matrix is based on that sort of, cause there's a whole bunch of different theories on what the future will hold and, and like alternate dimensions and timelines and stuff that like kind of like show a lot of in various works of film and, and stuff like that, where yeah. uh, essentially you have like the um, Blade Runner kind of timeline, yeah, yeah. The, the film noir sort of thing where it's like very much like, the world we live in today, except they have flying cars and shit, but there's still plenty of crime. And now, now we have to deal with like the cyber crime where it's like, well, it could be a, an AI or a robot that commits a crime. And you, we have to like figure out, mm -hmm. you know, without using like stuff like DNA evidence, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you have like the completely post apocalyptic future where it's just, the earth is just in shambles. Like Terminator uses that. And, it's like constantly at war. The Matrix uses that. And there, there's an idea of like salvation and, you know, the Zion. And it, yeah. it, it's very, it has like kind of religious overtones, you know? Yeah. I feel like it's a sort of thing where it's like, um, heaven. Mm -hmm. That's this sort of heaven thing. Okay, right now we have three instances of a troll in here. Let's see if we, uh, see if one of them can get in. Let's see. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, there's, a, there's like the Back to the Future one, you know, where... It's very much like today, except the fashion is different. Flying cars yeah. and, and stuff like that. But, like, politics and entertainment is, is very much the same. I mean, if you oh. if you remember in, in uh, part two of Back to the Future, there was a, what, Jaws 15 or something? Yes. <laughs> it's like, they, that's what they thought. I mean, granted, it was a Zemeckis film and Zemeckis and Spielberg are really close and all that, so... Of course, they're going to have uh, a Jaws film still be relevant that many years into the future. But that's, okay. what, that's what they thought 2015 was going to look like. That that film was set in the year 2015. Yep. How wrong they were. I know. I mean, shit, they didn't even make it to the, the first wave of, uh, you know, COVID. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's right. Imagine that future with with a COVID thing, and like crimes were basically uh, prevented because they had like the the whole like scanner thing. The cops could just scan you and be like, "Okay, well, you're this person. You live here. This is you know," and that's how they they kind of like do things. And like, yep. There's also what's the other one that? Um, oh my God, I'm gonna. Mm, it's the film that has the police that know you're going to commit a crime before you commit it because of like the it's like the soothsayer people like the, the ladies in the pool you know they, they know everything and they're just like mm. ah gonna kill me um I'm not a film you're on about you know it too yeah uh, but that that movie like you know there's the, the whole like Crime is not even so much of a factor anymore because they have ways of, of telling that you're going to commit a crime before you even commit it. And that's very much a scary thing because there are, you know, people out there that believe that there's certain, you know, genes and stuff like that just within you that just tell you that tell people that you're going to commit crimes, you're going to be a violent person or whatever. And it's like, imagine a world where in the future you have people 
basically being killed off like their kids or whatever like oh your kid has this particular gene it's going to be a bad person we're going to have to lock him away right away and never let him out you know minority yeah. report minority report thank you yeah but you know what i mean like that's a possibility too where yeah. you know that that could that kind of shit could happen i would fucking hate that that would suck um but it's scary, but it's true. It's like one of those mm -hmm. things where it could happen. I mean, maybe not the people in the pool, but using technology and, and gene studies and all that, like there could potentially be a way that, um, you know, you'd be able to tell who's going to be able to commit crimes in the future mm -hmm. without, you know, being a baby while still being in the womb, even. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see, Dire Thing said, uh, this is why it's important to spread the lies on the internet. Uh, the AIs have to have some vulnerabilities, like birds not being real. <laughs> well, birds aren't real, so there's that. Job done. Matrix is po post-collapse Detroit, but electronics instead of car factories. I mean, that's true. Have you, have you ever seen what Detroit looks like nowadays? No. Well, let's put it this way. <clears throat> A couple of years ago, I was hanging out at the shop and we had one of our buddies in just shooting the shit with us. And he was saying how one of his friends bought a house in Detroit. I'm like, why would you do that? That's that sounds awful. He's like, have you seen how cheap real estate is in Detroit? I'm like, no. It's like, just have a look real quick. Just have a look. So I had like. Uh, an app for like buying houses so I'm like alright well let's check out a zip code in Detroit I checked out a, a zip code and I could buy a house for as little as $5,000 wow now that house was on the brink of collapse like it was basically just you're kind of buying the land that it sits on yeah yeah but I looked at all the the uh listings there was an mm -hmm. entire neighborhood for sale and all of the houses were just like crumbling. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so technically I'm like, I could buy a house. I could buy a whole neighborhood's worth of houses, right? Fix them up and move my friends in. Mm -hmm. And my, my buddy was like, yeah, Except then you still have to deal with all the crime and shit, because, like, that is apparently just rampant in Detroit, because, like, I don't know, cops have better things to worry about than a bunch of crack houses, and, <laughs> you know, I'm like, fair, but at the same time, it's like, imagine just building your own compound. Uh, 15 years, uh, what Detroit looked like 30 years ago was much worse. Oh, God. 15 years ago, uh, there were houses under $50. Wow. <laughs> Detroit is trying to trick people into making taxes uh, so they don't go bankrupt again. Well, here's the thing. When you have... I, I feel like Detroit was almost like a, a boom town. You know, like where it pops up out of nowhere because of a certain need. So Detroit huh? was always known as Motor City, you know, the place where you manufacture cars and like all yep. the all the major car manufacturers were there. And they eventually were becoming obsolete because no one wanted to make cars there anymore. We wanted to do it cheaper and we could do it cheaper in places like Mexico. Mm -hmm. So Detroit was fucked. Like what? What good are you if you are not doing the thing that you built the entire city for in the first place? Oh, quite, yeah. So, essentially, there was no use for Detroit anymore. And it just started crumbling. Jeez, now it goes live. It's okay. Stream Elements is a little bit late to the show here. <laughs> And for the policing, anyone with any sense left the police department there. Uh, most went to Ohio or Indiana. Which is, uh, you know, reasonable. But it's just wild to me that, like, there's this, this huge city 
that used to have a, a need like people used to you know need that city for something mm -hmm. and now we don't need that city and it's just crumbling to dust you know crime is rampant it's a complete shithole and it's like what do we do what do you do what is like because before people would just abandon a boom town like a mining town in the old west right yep. they would get the use out of the mine like whatever vein that they were mining they would like mine it out and then if it was at the end then you go all right well screw it get out of here pack up your shit kids we're going further west you know and the town would just become abandoned and there's so yep. many cases of that and there's like you could go out west and find like the shell of a former town that would have like a post office and a saloon and you know like just like the the western movies are kind of similar there'd just be like a couple of houses and like all these little little buildings and a mine uh -huh. but none of it was being used for anything because that it was irrelevant so yeah like what what do you do just abandon detroit and be like all right well that was good when it lasted but we gotta we gotta get out of here so <laughs> what do you do or you just let it go to shit and let people buy houses for 50 bucks and do whatever the hell they want uh the need isn't the issue it is the unions and the corruption well yeah there's that there's that bunch of gm production just moved less than 100 miles to get out of michigan damn what's wrong with michigan What's the problem with Michigan? I don't know. Mm. I wouldn't have a clue. But, it just sounds like eight mile took over the city. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, eight mile became like eighty miles. The unions control the state government. Good lord. Okay. And their demands are not sustainable. Well, yeah, that would make sense. Oh. Okay, the gray screen. It's better than pink screen. True. It says you're muted. Matt, if you can hear us. Oh. I'm only unmuted. Yes, you, you are, are unmuted. Un right, we're getting somewhere now. Okay. I don't want him to do this so we're off my fucking phone. Jesus, oh. Discord is really giving you trouble today, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Hey! It ain't pretty, but it's working. <laughs> It'll do. There you go, the face of Cheech. <laughs> oh, my God. What you been up to, uh, Matt? Trying to sort fucking Discord out. Wow, well, yeah. <laughs> For 38 minutes. <laughs> What have I been up to? Uh, not a lot, to be honest, mate. Not since I finished doing another show. Um, yeah. Doing a show with Lee Armitage, of which a lot of you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm back into more of the music scene, like I always have been, which nice. I'm enjoying that, because so much more chill. There's no bitching, and, and which we do get with the other scene, should we say. Yep. Uh, which is why I think most of us have moved away from it a bit. Uh, um, and yeah, more chilled. So I'm enjoying that. I do a Sunday show with a couple of people, one of them being Tyler from the States. Nice. Bit vaping related, but no, yeah, I'm trying to take it more down the chat room. Yeah, hence, hence this show. <laughs> you know, no longer salves. Undesirable. Mm -hmm. like... Let's be honest. <laughs> vaping, vaping really, especially with states, not rubbing it in, but, and it will be here soon. Vaping is dead, isn't it, really, mm -hmm. in a lot, of, a lot of ways. Yep. Uh, it's it's dead in the classical hobby sense of dead. It's now, because exactly. like, you know, smoking cigarettes back in the day used to be something there was a, a renaissance when it came to smoking because you had the 
the women that had the big long uh extensions mm. and you know people yeah. would wear fancy gloves and and smoke a cigarette with the the things and all that and it's like la di da there's a big to do about it and then oh yeah. yeah it just sort of became mundane and normal and average and boring and then it was just a habit that was just a habit it was a dirty habit you know like there, there was a stigma behind smoking so i feel like yeah. vaping is going through that transition pretty quick right because it's not going to go away completely but it can't at this point it's too much of a staple in our society so at this yeah. point it's just going to become one of those things that certain people do and it's like you either gonna you're gonna smoke or you're gonna vape and that's pretty much your your options you know yep. you're gonna use nicotine in one form or another exactly Which, you know it's just the newest thing and everyone was scared of it at first and now it's just like oh you vape okay huh and i mean some people still don't understand you know vaping in, in the sense that they think it smells or whatever or it's unhealthy and it's like i don't care what your opinion is about it to be fair and it's like you know the same thing opinions are like assholes everyone's got when they all stink yeah exactly but the hobbyist side uh, of vaping is is entirely dead yeah it is it's it gonna is. it's it's basically down to oh what disposable do you use oh what disposable do you use and then anyone no, 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 no. Go on. Everybody's going on about the disposables at the minute. That it's killed vaping. No. That's all I've heard in the no. UK. Vaping was... killed vaping. <laughs> and it wasn't even vaping killed vaping. It was certain people on certain shows, particular groups of people. <laughs> not naming any names of what going been many of that. But it got to this click thing, which it it always happens. It always happens with groups of people. Opinions, you know, opinion, every, people's opinions, and then people start boosting others in opinions, and then you, and you get all the backstabbing and all of that rubbish that's going on. And that's exactly what happened. Yep. And then all the hatred comes out of, you know, yeah. So disposables didn't kill vaping. Just people being idiots did. Well, it's like I'm saying, like I mean, people destroy people all the time. I get people that come into my shop, and it, and if someone's there with like a vape in their hand, like a box mod, yep, there would be like you know a person picking out a disposable, and like the person that's like has the box mod in their hand the customer will lean over to the other person and be like oh you should get like this flavor or something and they go oh well what do you vape and they go oh i have a mod and a tank and everything and they're like oh one of those old things and i'm like Ugh, have we reached that point yeah <laughs> we've reached that point where new vapors are looking at veteran vapors and be like oh that old thing oh geez what does that? What does that make like people who are using mech still? What the hell does that make us? Vaping antiques. Yeah, pretty much. Anyone that still like wants to go to a cloud comp would be like, "Yo, you see the? There's a cloud comp. Yeah, let's go. Let's build our, our vapes." And... The problem is that would be me and Mike, and that would. <laughs> so we are a couple of antiques. Well, yeah. The antiques crowd show, yeah. Yeah, the difference is I actually look like one as well. Well, I'm far off nowadays, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I just think I, I, that's the other thing is that the humour's gone out of it a lot of the shows. Of it, there's no, you can't have a joke with people. You can't uh, take mm. the, you know. And I'm not being saying being nasty, no, nope. but it's you can't have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a giggle. But I know my wife does it if banter. ever he comes in every single month. Exactly, it's just no banter has died. This show is entirely banter. <laughs> it's all we do is just waffle on about what? nothing for two hours. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with having a bit of banter and a bit of fun and a bit of a giggle with people and and taking people away from normal life for five minutes? Unfortunately, Matt, there's just too many snowflakes out there now. Yeah. 
everyone's got anxiety and stress and you know they can't handle certain things and look i get it i get get there's genuine people in this world who have me being one but anxiety and panic attack Mm -hmm. and all of them bad things there's also a lot of snowflakes out there who like to say they've got it Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm it's like trauma Um, you know i feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of trauma that goes on i went to yeah i went to expo oh i've got trauma (laughs) (laughs) i mean it seems like everyone has trauma nowadays and i mean i'm not discounting the people that do but it just seems like God, if someone makes fun of you about your, let's say, you know, you go to expo and someone says, oh, that old mod or whatever, you go, oh, I have trauma over that. I can't, can't deal with that. It's like, really? Yeah, you're not allowed to say that uh, somebody's skinny, somebody's fat, somebody's tall, somebody's, you can't say any of these things anymore. Yeah, it's hard to describe people anymore. You know, they're um, yeah, they're sort of the husky gentlemen. Well, you can't even say that anymore. Um, you can't say gentleman, can you? Because so, that would be seen as offensive. Okay, I had I have uh, one of my fellow employees at the shop is a former marine. You know, tall drink of water, very uh, you know. He stands at attention half the time, I swear to God. Not attention, uh, at parade rest, right? He's, he, yeah. he stands with his hands, like, locked behind his back and, like, just waits for customers to come in the door. And then he goes, um, he, he calls everyone sir or ma'am, right? And I had to tell him, I'm like, you got to be careful with certain people and doing that. Like, I get it. The, the old timers are okay with it and stuff, but, like... Certain people might actually take offense by being called sir, sir or ma'am, you know? And he's like, what the hell is this world coming to? And I'm just like, look, that's that's the world we live in today. You know, it, you, people get offended by being gendered like that. And there's a point where PC goes a little bit too far, you know? Oh, and, oh yeah. And like, I'm all about like, not misgendering someone that you know is prefers to have a certain pronoun that's fine if you prefer your pronoun i will call you your pronoun that's going to be the end of it but if some random person walks up to that person and and pronouns them out of nowhere or mispronouns them then they shouldn't be like well actually it's this it's like okay you can't expect the general public to understand where you're coming from if they don't know you like I would know someone, right? Like, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to be tolerant with people. Uh, if I slip up, I slip up. It's not an intentionally harmful thing that I'm doing. It's a slip of the tongue. You know, it happens. You, Your ability to just kind of internalize that and just go, okay, no big deal. Let it roll off your back and move on with your life. Don't let it hang you up in life is your ability to cope with the rest of the world. You know? Yeah. Unfortunately, the world is, is changing and not for the better. I don't think I'm not going to do the classic. Oh, it was better in my day. Cause it wasn't. No. <laughs> yeah. Has the world improved? Yes, in a lot of ways, the world has improved. I think the tolerance is the best improvement, in my opinion. Tolerance to yep. be it sexuality, to somebody's sexuality, to somebody's religion, and so on. Yes, and that is important. Um, I mean, Mike knows my sort of religious beliefs. They're not uh, they're the normal religious beliefs. They're very similar to Mike's. Mm-hmm. But if somebody is Christian or, or or Jewish or whatever or Muslim, yeah, that's fine. Exactly. But I have no issues with that. No issues at all, unless they're an extremist. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, that's, that's any the, religious. That's the groups that cause problems is the extremists. Any extreme on any front is going to cause problems. No matter what background, well, creed, yeah. color, etc. Yeah. You know, you only have to look at the Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> they're giving they're giving certain people a bad name. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. But uh, it's the hill that they chose to die on, you know? And it's like that but then again, you, you look at it in the Westboro Baptist Church. Everyone looks at them like they're a joke and no one takes them seriously because of it. Everyone goes, oh, my God, did you hear what that person just said? Like, they called them a bad, like, a word or whatever. It's like, okay. They do it for shock value and they, they get, like, attention in the media for it. Not to raise awareness of their cause. They're not doing a good job for encouraging people to join their cause by doing what they do. So, If, if your belief is the Baptist church, or I mean, Southern Baptist church with... I think it's with the Westboro. That's fine. That is absolutely fine. But with their church, the Westboro Church, it's um, it's like a parody of a church. Yeah, you don't it, like. Does anyone actually take it seriously? I mean, it's kind of like the other kind of radicalized religions, right? You have uh, yeah. you have like um, Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my sister ended up dating a Jehovah's Witness when she was in high school, and the things she would tell me are like kind of crazy. Cause she'd be like, "Yeah, they they don't celebrate any holiday or whatever. They're mm -hmm. like, they don't yeah. celebrate Halloween or anything like that." I'm like, "They're not allowed to like go out of the house or do anything. They they're very strict. The parental figures were very very strict, and it was hard yeah, for them yeah. to like do anything without their parents knowing about it." and they give a certain percentage of their wages to the church which a lot of religions do I think it starts at something ridiculous like 18% and goes up to 30% yeah yeah. It's, it, you know, it's a lot of money yeah. I mean like, they don't allow blood transfusions mm -hmm. no uh, I mean again it's their belief it's their belief but fucked if I'd be letting my kid fucking lay there dying if it needed a blood transfusion. But you gotta look at how the public perception of them is. You know, like, you know, the the whole like stereotype, right? So when, when stereotypes, all stereotypes have an inkling of truth in them, you yeah. know? Yeah, and people like kind of go, well, oh, that's not, that not nice to say or whatever. It's like, yeah, but think about it it's true it wouldn't be a stereotype if a bunch of people didn't do the same thing you know some of them can be insensitive and mean-spirited but at the end of the day you know i i make fun of myself for being french canadian and this and that all the time because there are stereotypes <laughs> you know so you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and the people that lose their humor about it are the types that are more dangerous than others. Like you got like Scientologists, right? That's another religious faction that is radicalized yeah. and, you know, has a lot of uh, controversy around it because of yeah. the way they treat their, their members and the, their behaviors and how just, and really weird yeah. they are. <laughs> yeah. We've got a big church of theirs not far away from here as well. Yeah. Seems to be something around Wimbledon, mate. It seems to be the attraction well, of the ladies. It's not far away. This, this one's um, <laughs> uh, down by East Grinstead Way. But Mike's yeah. trying to gas them out one by one. I see it in between Godston and uh, East Grinstead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where you are, mate. Just off the A22. There are some... Yeah, London has some, is, uh, well, London, I think, is slowly falling to bits, yeah. I'll be glad when London finally fucking sinks, mate. <laughs> it, let's be honest, London's fucked in it as, as a... As a UK 
I nearly said white British town. That would have been really, really, that would have been really, really good, would it? Um, but as a, as London used to be, which was multicultural. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. London is still multicultural, but London seems to be less tolerable of the multicultures yeah. that are there. That's scary. That's a scary thought. Because <clears throat> it's like, with anything, right? Like, this town that I live in, there was a big wave of Slavic countries immigrating to this town. Oh. We have yep. a lot of Russians and Ukrainians here, and it yep. happened a lot during my high school years. And we didn't know how to deal with it because they have their own culture and their own traditions and their own way of life and they had to not only adapt to our way of life a bit but we also as a, the town had to adapt to their way of life and now they have like a, a section of town where there's like a heavy population and there's like a russian supermarket down there yep. and they have you could get like all sorts of imported russian stuff yep. and i always found that to be fascinating because it's like oh cool little cultural shop you know but like would i be caught walking around in that neighborhood late at night probably not i wouldn't want to because like there is that with that amount of people in crammed into a small area it's a more kind of lower income area and it's a it's a bit bit on the dodgy side we'll say so like it's not those people in particular i wouldn't be afraid of any one of them you know if i was to meet them in public Mm -hmm. but it's just that there just generally is more crime in that area. Would I want to like park my car that down there and leave it there for two days? Probably not, because I'd come back and wheels would be stolen and the catalytic converter would be gone. You know? <laughs> yep. I mean, well, round where I am, like the, the southwest London stroke Surrey borders, it's there is a very multiculturalized society here we've yeah. got a, a lot of africans we've got a lot of um jamaicans we've got a lot of polish and i mean a lot of polish um the people over the back of me are from uzbekistan i think it's uzbekistan they said yeah. uh just up the road from me We've got the biggest mosque in the country. Damn. Yeah. Uh, I forget how you pronounce the name of it. Fatabula or something like that. And the one thing that annoys me is the fact that these people don't want to assimilate into our culture. Yeah, they, they tend to, to stick with stick. each other to their own culture and then force their own culture upon everyone else so okay dire thing said <clears throat> i gotta check catch up on chat a little bit here uh so let's see uh going back to cc coils here uh did, did, trauma comes in all shapes and sizes and the whole snowflake pc generation can go pound sand when they jump down your throat when you were raised in a different time and you treat people with respect you you were brought up with that was to do with the whole sir and ma'am thing, yeah. Uh, tolerance has come full circle to intolerance that is either going to stop or start a war. Oh boy. Uh, Westboro is far less out there than some of the Baptist factions. They don't handle venomous snakes and speak in tongues in public. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, I'm French-Canadian, so I apologize for dropping my rifle and running away. <laughs> uh, CC Coil says, I hate everyone equally. If you look female on first contact, I will treat you as such. If you are of a different race to me, I don't care. Same with religion. As long as you don't go spouting whatever bollocks waffle at, at me, we're good. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's true with everything, though. That's true with everything we're talking about. Religion, politics, uh, you know, sexual orientation, etc. As long as you don't go... Lathering on about it. Common sense, doesn't it? It comes down to common sense. 
Yeah. But well, it's common no, decency. Much. Common decency and, and respect. There isn't much of it about, to be fair. Well, yeah, it's disappeared for the most part because, like, one person that gets offended at something to do with, you know, sexual orientation-wise will try to push a religion onto you or something. It's like, <laughs> you can't have it both ways. That's not how this works. I mean, mate, I don't give a flying fuck what colour you are, what race you come from, what creed you are. I don't care whether you associate as man, woman, fucking kettle. I don't give a fuck if you follow the re re religion of Tetley's. <laughs> it's defended all key drinkers now. <laughs> Man, you's a fuck. At the end of the day, if you're a decent person, I accept you for who you are. If you're mm. a cunt, I'll tell you you're a cunt. <laughs> if I don't see an issue with that. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't see an issue with that, mate. Right. And it's like <laughs> a lot of I, people don't. I grew up with the golden rule. Golden rule is treat other people how you would want to be treated, and I do that. <laughs> In every aspect of my life, I am I am a non-confrontational, you know, type person. So I I prefer to avoid any confrontation at all, you know, turns. Right? I, I instead of fighting with you, mm -hmm. I'll just walk away and I'll just be the better person about it. And like, yeah. it's worked in my favor. I've talked about it on this show before, where I've had bullies that come back to me years later and apologize for what they did, and I'm just like, you know what? I appreciate and respect you know, your words and actions. So thank you. And I accept you back into my mm -hmm. life, you know, if you want to be a part of it. And that, that's I mean, what I'll, it is. I'll, I'll give you an instance, right? When I used to work for Mitch and Bell buses, right, I'm going back to sort of like 2004, 2005 time. All right. There, there was a shortage of bus drivers coming over to my company when they took on more routes. So one of the... Um, managerial staff had a Polish wife right and he spoke fluent fluent Polish so he went over to Poland and got a load of Polish PCV drivers the company paid for them all to relocate over to the UK and start driving for us now when they started instead of holding classes for the polish people to learn to speak english no. they the company expected the english staff to learn to speak polish so we could accept them okay i'm gonna i'm gonna avoid oh there's a little toot in chat there hey uh we're gonna we're gonna talk about something a bit different in the fact that um paris if, like this has been going on for years now but like in Paris there's a whole section of people that are I, I believe Muslim um, and they have this whole part where it, that the, the laws don't like really apply the cops don't go in there because they don't oh. yeah they're, they're afraid of what people will do to them if they go in there it's like they're semi-radical in a way but yeah with any group of people like we're talking about like with any group of people they could be radicalized you know mm -hmm. at the end of the day as long as they have a strong will and and care to do so and be radicalized i mean we're talking anyone any any single mm -hmm. religion can do that and i mean look at the yeah. influence on the u.s government with generally christianity I mean, there's the whole Roe versus Wade getting overturned. You know, that was a pretty big deal when it happened. Mm -hmm. And then now it's gotten we're, we're 30 years behind now because we overturned it. it was, go back 2000 years. The, the Christian religion beat the fuck out of the Romans and took over the Romans because Romans originally obviously pagan. And believed in pagan gods mm -hmm. and could then turn the roman empire into christian and destroyed it and so, with it goes art and culture so there's that too don't forget yeah. <laughs> yep Human uh, it's, you think about it even with catholicism 
You've got the radical. Uh, I mean, look at Opus Dei. Uh, yeah. Sex of Catholic. Good the sect of Catholicism that believed in self-torture. Yeah. They thought by flogging themselves and hurting themselves it would bring them closer to God. Or well, getting a bit into the conspiracy theory now, the fact that there's a room in the... Uh, at St. Peter's, there's a room under there that mm -hmm. has a deity of... The Elzebub and the devil. Yeah. In a room. <laughs> and there is footage of that. That's that's scary. Uh, Jenny says there are uh, there's multiple sides to the Muslim faith, and I think people like to tarnish the whole faith because of shit that uh, some have done in yeah. the past. Yeah, but you get no, that with every religion, and there's extremists with every group. I think people that's, would do well to remember. This is why I said extremists. Right. Mm -hmm. To just say, and it would be like say, you know, it's to just say, oh, Muslims, yeah, they blow things up. Well, but what? Whoa, 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 hold on a minute. No, yeah. no. no, ninety-nine point nine percent of Muslims <clears throat> are very decent, lovely people, yeah. very respectful, yeah. really nice. You, you Unfortunately, know what? Unfortunately, there's the odd one. I feel like. The UN and US government are a big reason to blame the radicalization of Muslims. Mm -hmm. Because we went over there and decided to start a 20 year war for pretty much no reason. We said it was to, well, at first it was to put in a democracy in Iraq, and that worked great. <laughs> of course it did <laughs> and uh, to then but then it started becoming a war on terror ah uh, the weapons of mass destruction mm -hmm. yeah which were never there there or found or oh, anything didn't exist. Yeah. It didn't exist <laughs> so we and, and of course the spun news likes to come up with things like oh well we sent the UN inspectors, but they wouldn't let them in, and blah, 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 blah. Doesn't matter. We shouldn't have been in there in the first place. The fact that you you take the people that are in the military and just send them over there and say, look, brown people bad, you know, yeah. and give them rules of engagement that are very loose and not tactical whatsoever is a horrible strategy. That's not a good way to make a good impact well, on the country. You had troops who were being sent in untrained and, as you said, weren't exactly tactful. And I don't mean just American. I mean British too. Mm -hmm. Everyone within the UN. With, who were dealing rather than dealing with people on the, on the ground, as they say, and dealing with them as people, they were dealing with them as targets. Yep. So as soon as something happened that was a little bit surprising or they kicked a football at a Land Rover or they were getting shot. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was no preparation there. there. It was... And then, of course, we had Tony Blair doing his brilliant job as a politician. And I might, might remember this one. There was a professor who was investigating the weapons of mass destruction and i can't think of his name he was a professor i know what you're talking about and he died in london yeah and this man yeah i'm not saying that people know a lot about slitting their own wrists but according to them he cut his own wrist <laughs> He cut his left wrist, even though he was left-handed. Now, if you're left-handed... You cut your right. You're going to cut your right wrist. It was a put-up job by somebody in political powers in the government at the time. <clears throat> Covering up. You had the Snowden stuff going on with all the polit In America, you had all of that going on. So, we talk about extremism in Muslims. 
What about extremism in governments of <laughs> the UK, America, Germany, Italy, yeah, all of these other so-called... The technologically advanced countries. Yeah. You know, people that should know it? better. People that know that no, they no. can control their constituents with media and propaganda. We, we are far worse than most Muslim countries. Far worse. In our general attitude. Yeah. If we think that the, the people that blow themselves up are radicalized and, and are big, big and bad, look at the people who control everything else that's going on around you. You know, the media... <laughs> yeah getting deep into some conspiracy theorists like what as much as they think they're telling us what are they not telling us at the end of the day exactly big picture I someone uh, Dyer thing said big picture someone was going into the Middle East it just uh, was a matter of who <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about like Russia because Russia's had plenty of influence in the Middle East as well he gave them after well, weapons. Went in there first, wasn't it? Yes. Well, well, you have to get it right. We, you know, the UK and America, we were running the, the uh, petrol and fuel out of the east. Mm -hmm. The Russians were running uh, like the heroin trade out of Afghanistan. Yep. And that's what it all came down to, is what these countries had to provide. Mm -hmm. And wasn't it the English army that taught the people of Afghanistan to fight against the Russians? Yep. Yep. And we also supplied plenty of people with weapons over there, too, because uh, oh, yeah. you, there's, you, there's pictures of you know. uh, of um, God, what's his name? The number one target that was uh, assassinated when Obama was president. Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's pictures of Bin Laden shaking hands with American presidents. Yeah. <laughs> we gave him weapons. We just didn't tell people, like, 20 years after we gave him weapons, that we gave him weapons. If I remember rightly, I, I think I heard um, or read something that Bin Laden was actually educated over here. He was. I think it was Oxford University. I was going to say, I think he actually he was actually at school with um, Blair, wasn't he? It says it all, doesn't it? Or he was at uni with Blair, one or two. One, one or two, mate, right? yeah. It, it just proves how small that world is, though, doesn't it? The, the political and, mm -hmm. like, the powerful business people. Hmm. You said well, it right there, that. business. And the Bilderberg group and, you know, all of that group, like that. Well, I don't know if you guys have been paying any attention to what's going on right now with uh, Iran. But no, I'm up, I haven't actually watched the news for about two years now. Things are not going well over there. Uh, there's been threats from the Iranian Navy to Americans. We're, we're put, poking our nose around over there because of what's going on with the uh, Gaza Strip and everything. So we have our, our carrier fleet over there and stuff. So they're not too happy about it. They want us out. And there's been minor uh, aggressions happening on both sides. We've done a few drone yeah. strikes. I also think it's strange how everything's gone quiet on the Russian-Ukrainian front, media-wise, anyway. Oh, well, I mean, this one's more important, Mike. More money. Are you suggesting that that war may have been just as a cover-up for something else? <laughs> <laughs> well, Not that I would ever suggest that, ever. Uh, you mean like business meddlings before a certain someone's son, uh, you know, was over there? <laughs> well, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe news. the... <laughs> Maybe the fact that uh, certain things happened just after COVID and COVID vanished all of a sudden. Well, I have some big news story to sensationalize. I, I don't doubt that there was a virus of some sort because having seen Jenny with said virus, mm -hmm. 
who was very poorly blasted. There was definitely a virus about. Yep. Oh, no, I know that from the state my sister was in. Exactly. So, I mean, I saw it and I saw people with it, so it wasn't, mm. oh, no, it's bullshit. Definitely I mean, was. It's still suffering with the after effects of it. But I do tend to think that there's... I tend to think that the virus was possibly a man-made thing that was released without men meaning to be released, mm. can we say? I think yes, it was it was a man-made virus, but was it released accidentally? I don't think so. I think it could have well, been a test that got gone awry. I think it was something to do with the American government, because mm. the Americans have done stuff like this before. It's all so. over the side. Yes, we have done this before. Uh, there's been documented cases of CIA releasing small amounts of a virus in a, a populated area to test the spread. Uh, there was also the the uh, outbreaks of of syphilis in I was, Mississippi. I was just about to say that. A terrible accident. Suddenly there was an outbreak and a lot of black people died. Not trying to make this racial, by the way. I'm not saying well, that, but no, but the CIA made it racial. <laughs> it was like you look at that situation. It was like, wow, this that, 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 that's not good, guys. That's that's you can't do that. <laughs> it's like, I, some of the stuff that governments have done over the years is just unbelievable, scary. Dyer thing said Fauci was on the board that funded the US contribution to the Wuhan lab everyone was suspecting. When he wasn't torturing puppies. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fauci. Jeez. I just it, it's it's a social well, I hate to call it a social experiment, but in a way it is because it you is. think about it. It is a social They experiment. were trying to gauge the response of the world to what they are doing they're meddling you know so they were trying to go okay well if we do this how will people respond you know and it shows that the people when given a, a glimmer of hope would just latch onto it and just go with whatever they said it's like oh we have a we have a a, a jab right we we created a vaccine Okay, how efficient is the vaccine? Uh, about 70-80% and it drops down to about 30-40% within six months. Okay, well, yeah. we'll just keep jabbing them. Will they, will they do that, though? And then after the first jab, when they said, okay, it's time for everyone's booster, like, well, the percentage of people that got the booster was incredibly low compared to the first jab. Yeah. So it just showed that, like, okay, well, people are already over this completely, and they don't want to even bother getting the second jab. And I know people that have been jabbed three, four, five times that still get COVID. I've been jabbed five times, and I've only had COVID once. That's good. That's good, you know. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've seen people that have never gotten COVID without a jab. I've seen mm -hmm. people that have never gotten COVID with the jab. I've seen people that have COVID five times, no jab, and five times with the jab. So it doesn't matter. Or with, with yep. full boosters and everything. So I don't think it matters. You're going to get sick or you're not going to get sick. I think the people that are at very high risk, like Jenny or any Im immunodeficient people, should get a, the jab at least. Did you stay up with all the boosters? Eh, maybe. But that's up to you. That's up to you. And, you know, I feel like the population control aspect of it was just kind of a bonus because they look at the world population and go, there's a lot of old people that we're keeping alive for a lot longer than we should. Uh, <clears throat> at least the virus. I don't know. This is all conspiracy theory. Back to the Bilderberg group, you see. But then again, even the word conspiracy theory is in itself a conspiracy theory because the government created the whole thing of conspiracy theorism. 
They're like, oh, well, that guy's crazy. That's a conspiracy. No, 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 no. That's not true. 15 years, 20 years later. Oh, yeah, by the way, we totally did that. <laughs> Thanks, CIA. Oh, yeah. What we've got to do is make somebody look enough of an idiot. Make them look a complete idiot, and nobody will believe them. Yeah. Make them look like a loony. So then you can make somebody look as, you know, you can get away with anything. You can lie about it. And governments lie all the time. No, really? Yeah, really, mate, really. Oh, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> but, like, if you think about it, right? There's even things deeper than just the CIA. There's there's things that go even further down than that, that rabbit hole. You know, the people that can control the government and the CIA. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, big business. No, it yeah. all boils down to this new world order. Well, at the end of the day, yeah. Oh. So... Is it, uh, why is it whenever somebody says New World Order, I instantly think of Mark <laughs> Roberts? I think of wrestling. Do you know, if New World Order is Mark Roberts, fuck me, we are fucked. <laughs> Michael Eisner says dire. <laughs> um, I just... Are you guys familiar with the Georgia Guidestones? Hey, what went? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I get to tell a little story. So there were these stones in Georgia that this uh, this individual contracted a uh, group of, uh, you know, masons, I guess, to uh, construct. And the dimensions and everything were very specific. And the the stone the the people that were doing the job didn't want to do it, so they quoted the, the person an astronomical amount of money and the person decided that that was fine and they paid them and construction began okay. the guide stones are located in a pretty rural rural area of uh, Georgia and they're kind of like on top of a hill and they are 30 feet tall I think roughly 30 feet tall and they are four big stone slabs each with inscriptions of 10 rules in a number of different languages including yeah. dead languages like aramaic okay yeah Interesting. yeah the structure itself functions as a compass north south east and, east and west mm -hmm. a clock and a calendar so it has multiple uses oh okay, yeah and people don't like it <laughs> because they think it's rules to start the new world order. The rules that are written on there are general guidelines to essentially reestablish uh, a population, essentially. So no, what, what you've just described is Stonehenge. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what I was thinking. And I feel that's like that's it sort of what Somebody... the people were trying to do. Somebody has come up with the idea of using monolithic stones to say, look, this is what, this is north, you know, north, south, east, west. This is 12, 6, 3, 9. Here are some rules that are useful. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I kind of look at it, too. Like, I don't think it has that nefarious of a meaning. I don't think it's like you're going to be if you don't do this you're going to be struck down by the new world order and shot to pieces and or imprisoned or so my my no. my brain goes to uh potential contact with aliens i mean yeah. maybe uh maybe. but also if the world fails if human beings finally like just crumble and all die Whoever may find these guide stones could potentially use that as the structure for a new, building a new world on the planet. And there's like things. Uh, that was, so let me. I need to like explain the things that were written. So it was like build a, a sensible government with rules that that are general outlines for the population. Encourage love, art, and culture. Uh, you know, all disputes will be decided by 
the general territories, anything bigger than that will be involved with the world court. So it's it's sort of a halfway decent way of living, according to the Guidestones themselves. However, <clears throat> people look at that and go, oh, shit, this is this is like telling how the new world is going to be. Oh, my God. But I'm, I'm thinking more innocent than that, but. Okay. Okay, but if, so the Constitution. Mm hmm. It's yeah. just a new Constitution written Essentially. for. What? It's a mi mixture of a Constitution and, uh, you know, the, the, the Ten Commandments, you know. But yeah. less. So less. What? More relevant to today's world, in a way. It just Maybe so happens that, that there are ten of them. I think we've come up with another theory. So that when the Constitution was written, that's why Wilkes Booth shot Lincoln. He didn't agree with his Constitution. He was like, nah, nah, I'm not having this. We'll shoot him. Because it's this attitude of what those rules are, are purely... Decent rules. So, I, uh, let me just point out that on July 6, 2022, according to Dire Thing, I'm sure you just looked it up real quick, but uh, July 6, 2022, an explosive device was detonated at the site, destroying the Swahili and Hindi language slab and causing significant damage to the capstone. Uh, the remaining stones were dismantled by authorities for safety reasons later in the, the day with a backhoe. So they're gone, but my first thought goes to aliens, and I, I think even if G were here, he'd probably agree with me. It's a way to potentially show aliens that we are a technologically advanced society and, and culture, and we, we know things, you know, <laughs> and maybe, hopefully, they'll be nice to us. I don't think there's any doubt that there is alien life out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I doubt very w much that the alien wife would see us as technologically advanced. <laughs> well, yeah. If they have the they technology to get to here from light years away, then yeah, they're way, 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 way more ahead of us. They're just going to look at us and think, what a bunch of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll probably look at us and think they're, we're still in the fucking Stone Age. Oh, in comparison, we're, sure. We're, yeah, we probably no, no, are. No, no. Yeah. Exactly. We think we're oh, technologically advanced, but here we are. We're using what we're given as far as tools are concerned, uh, i.e. like all the stuff that AI can do, and we're going, <laughs> I can make a picture of uh, you know, this guy out in the forest with the pizza and stuff. Ha <laughs> funny. I don't know. The more you think about it, the more you think about us as a, as a human race is we're pretty crap really to be fair okay <laughs> this doesn't help that i've been watching a, a breakdown of like every conspiracy theory ever it's a nine hour video i'm halfway through it <laughs> but I mean, we really are to be, per to be perfectly honest i don't see us as advanced as what ancient man was in comparison you know it's it's the whole like uh considering how old our civilization was when man first came about and how fast they created technology in comparison to how fast we're creating technology mm -hmm. and advancements it's like i think it would be in that sense that we're slowing down in a big way it may seem like we're going like a light year per minute but in reality it's it's like meh it's it's we're slowing down <laughs> we're not focusing on what we need to focus on we're focusing on all the bullshit and how how we can monetize whatever technology we come out with you know i really feel like you know that i i have a very dismal outlook on the future right i i i think it's going to be a, a very cyberpunky sort of future where there's just roving gangs and like no one's going to care about the lower or middle class whatsoever the upper class gets all the perks of society and everyone else has to fend for themselves 
And don't, don't play that. I'd rather just... that was now. I'd rather live in a dystopian world. <laughs> that's the thing. We are kind of living in a dystopian world. <laughs> but that's the thing. I mean, it's just going to get further. The separation is going to get further from high society to like middle, lower middle class. There's not going to be anything in between those. You know, it's going to be you're poor or you're rich and that's it. And everyone's going to have to make do and get by with what they got. And, you know, you're going to have a lot of violence and a lot of senseless death and destruction for not a lot of good. It's going to be a revolt with the, the lower class society yeah. against the upper class. We're going to have an internal power struggle war between lower and upper class. Again. Well, uh, well, I think we've already got that. <laughs> more, we've already got just, it all in London, most. But but stretch it out and make it big, right? Like we're gonna have the lower class trying to like take down corporations by you know blowing up headquarters and radicalization. All right. Uh, uh, next time you come over, I will take you to where I was born, which is Bermondsey in London. Right? <laughs> at, at night. And tell me it don't feel like Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. It is fucking, it, mate, it is scary shit around there. I know mm -hmm. I haven't been back for a few years, but uh, yeah. Uh, there's some places, yeah, that actually, it is actually like that, especially in the, some of the big cities like London and places. Yep. I mean, look at Elephant and Castle. Oh. You've seen uh, Fight Club, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like that's kind of how it's going to be, where there's going to be like these, this just desperately poor people living in shacks that who knows if it's even legal for them to live there. Probably not, considering the state of decay. But they group together and they faction up, and all of a sudden they radicalize and decide that they're going to cause chaos and, and, you know, bad things to happen by going against the big corporations, the ones that keep all the money from them. You know what I mean? No, and I don't think there's any... I think that will happen. That's what I'm saying. This is my prediction. <laughs> God forbid aliens yeah. show up and give us technology, because I could just make things ten times worse. The, the gap between the rich and poor will get wider. Yeah. Yeah, and it is. it has done in... The past 30, 40 years, it has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you only have to go into America, you only have to look at, say, Detroit. Well, oh, yeah, that's how we started the show, talking about Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, we've come that's... full circle. <laughs> well, yeah. it's South Detroit. South Detroit is the no go area, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we were talking about how in South Detroit you could buy a whole neighborhood worth of houses for just a few thousand dollars, maybe. And would you would, would you, you want, want to? to? Well, yeah, exactly. Well, here's the thing. I, I thought about it. I'm like, shit, if I was an investor, I would take that area and put a big wall and gate around it. And like uh, if all of that's my property, I'd build all the houses back up, move all my friends in there and we'd have a little city all to ourselves. I'd put a shop in the middle of it. There you go. You got your uh, your food and stuff like that. You could get within the safety of the, uh, the compound. Never have to leave. <laughs> is, why, why, why has the American government not done anything? Because mm, they used up the, the usefulness of them. They said, meh, we don't need them. Well, from obviously the car industry. That exactly. Was, uh, yeah. Uh, that's what we were talking about earlier. We we said we used up all the stuff that we needed from that area and we're moving on. I, I put it akin to uh, boom towns in the old west. I said it, it's just like a boom town where there was a vein of random, yeah. uh, you know, gold or something that, you know, people are trying to mine out. And once yeah. it dried up, then people just packed their shit and left. So waste. Yeah. Basically, the American government thinks while everyone is fighting each other to survive, the um, 
attention is taken away from them so they can get away and do with what they want. Yep. Citywide yeah, well. land party, I'm down. You can have it hardwired. Sorry. Wow, that'd be a cool land party, old. That's what I'm saying. We can have a little mini city. All to oh, ourselves. Well, everybody's there you, you would need to talk to, so the network within would be phenomenal. Exactly. Telling you, I just need a couple more people to invest with me. We could we could make our own little mini city. I've also been interested in, in like the potential of buying up land off the US government because they have at the old military bases that they don't use anymore, they have housing for yes. people. Mm -hmm. And they don't use it anymore. It's completely abandoned. But they have all these little like this little village of where like the the, the spousal housing was on really close yeah. to a military base. And they don't use it. And they still keep that damn land. The military doesn't like giving up their land, basically. That's it. At the end of the day, once they, they take it from someone, they don't want to give it up. They don't like giving up anything, does it, the military? Nope. I mean, look at what they did with uh, Nevada. They, they had to buy up as much land as they could because mm, barely anyone was living there. And if they were living there, they would say, okay, well, the government's taking this land so sorry but you you gotta go and it could be it, it, it didn't matter if it was like spiritual land or anything like that government said nope this is ours now it's crazy we need this we're gonna bomb the shit out of it it's like uh what there's <laughs> literally a plot of land in the United States where we just blow up repeatedly yeah, we have those over here. Yep. Mind you, down near me, actually, down the east coast. Oh, uh, there's quite a few. There's, don't forget the Salisbury Plains. Yeah. Which coincident, coincidentally is where Stonehenge is as well. Yeah. Mm, there's a conspiracy theory for you. Oh, well, there's, there's, many. An, there's an entire village down on the Salisbury Plains that the um, army took over. And turned it into a, uh, a simulation for clearing villages and towns. Yeah. Speaking I forget of, the name of it now. Speaking oh. of conspiracy theory, uh, there's a conspiracy theory that this planet itself is actually a prison. Yeah, we I'll are, that one. We're a prison planet for another, yeah. you know, carbon based life form planet that has water and, and oxygen somewhere. Yeah. And the moon is an observation base. Mm hmm. Could be. Yeah. The, the, the moon is actually metal inside. Supposedly, the moon's mass is far less than it should be, mm -hmm. considering its size. Technically, the moon, for the our planet's mass compared to the moon's mass, would have to be much smaller. Because the moon is in fact the duster. Maybe it's made of cheese. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe Hitler's still living up there on the on the dark side of the moon in the base in the shape of a swastika. Oh shit! That sounds like a great video game. <laughs> I'm sure that somebody has thought of it before, mate. Or maybe, just maybe, the elites have a secret entrance to the Middle Earth inside bit of the Hollow Earth uh, in Antarctica. Oh. It could be. <laughs> it could be, mate. It could be. Well, the thing I is, mean, who, who's going to go there and check? When the next ice cap melts, Godzilla ain't going to break free. Oh, God. Very true. Godzilla. It's possible. Eric said, or 
We're just all living on the Truman Show. Almost like possible. Just one no, gigantic I, I, soundstage. I think we're actually secretly inside the Matrix. None of us are actually awake. We already mm. talked about that too. Yay! <laughs> You see, that's the thing, isn't it? The Matrix does exist. We're living in it. Yeah. The entire thing is Neo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this all along. You can't fool me. You can't pull the wool over my eyes. Well, then again, it's already pulled over. I just I can't seem to get out of it. That's the problem. It can't have a land party in Detroit. They would steal the cables for, for copper even before the computers were installed. Not if I have a 10 foot wall. Well, make it 20. 20 foot concrete wall with uh, guard dogs and towers. I'm sure. It's starting to sound more like Auschwitz than a, like a no, place to live. No, you will want to live in my city. You, you just have me on the fucking tower with an MG36. Ooh. You know why? Nick's going to have a side above the gate, don't you? Work will free you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just because it's going to be named the Gulag does not mean it's going to be I like did, one. I made that. No, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not arguing Look, with what you want to call it. It's not to keep you Stop. in. It's to prevent others from coming in. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs would OD on crack, two crackheads, into the first wave. <laughs> Ah, see, Eric's down. All right, Eric wants to live in my city. We can see in Detroit. There'd be plenty of crack, wouldn't there? Probably. Tell you what, tell you what, Eric, Eric, you can be our resident chef. You can have your little uh, little diner in our city as well. We'll have a shop where we sell goods, and we'll have a little diner where Eric runs. Mate, as long as I get to play with BFGs, I'll be there. Oh my God, it could be like the the shop from. Uh, Ready or not, the first level where there's a gas station and little convenience store on one side and a little diner on the other. Oh, except hopefully not filled with bad guys. Mike, you want a BFG? As long as I can play with BFGs, mate, I'm there. Okay. Well, you're a good crack shot sniper, so I would expect you to, you know, do that. We could have a, a, a big tower right in the middle where you could get a good mile and a half shot. That'll do. <laughs> well, dude, just give me a barrel light 50 and I'm sorted. That's the off brand Kool Aid. Oh, man. Look, you could be. We will have uh, one religion. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Keep your religion to yourself. Getting a truck with things inside your enclave with the things still inside would be hard, also. What the fuck are you guys talking about? You can't have decent guns in Michigan. Can you not? No. Man, I was hoping they were one of the cool states. Damn it. Right, so then all you do is you build an even bigger fucking wall and thicker wall and claim independence. Yeah. We'll just get a lot of 22 long rifles. It's like a shitload. If I'm gonna have a mile long, mile and a half shot radius, I'll need bigger than a fucking two two. <laughs> New Hampshire? Yeah, but New Hampshire is expensive to live in. We can't, we can't build our compound in New Hampshire. Maybe Texas. I don't know. In yeah, no, that Texas well, would be too hot for me. Ah. Uh, Texas would be ideal for the gun part. Yeah. Or Montana. Yeah. Montana's pretty good. You got lots of big mountainous hey, ranges and stuff. Okay, just go for it. Alaska. Ooh, that's cold, though. Okay, Alaska's weird, because six months out of the year, you get daylight, and six months you get, like, no no daylight. That won't bother me sniping. Night vision. <laughs> okay, well. It, it acts so bad, but it'd be better at night, mate, with the cold. <laughs> be perfect <laughs> what the well, fuck is MST uh Montana something I don't know too many Californians moving out Ugh. hear me out all we need is an aircraft carrier could be a possibility 
Could be. Yeah, that's, that's just it. We go back to Trump the wanted to build, Trump wanted to build a wall to keep the Mexicans out. He should have built a wall to keep the Californians fucking in. <laughs> Trust me, if including, he could, he would. Yeah, including him. Problem is, states' rights, you can't do that. You'd have to get permission on the borders of the other states that it would be built through. Womp womp. Oh, Mountain Standard Time. Yeah, yeah. Why, though? That's so stupid. California, go, go stay in California, would you? Come on. I mean, you, you could go with Tennessee. Mm, yeah, well, I had a friend move out there. But then again, like you gotta look, at, you. gotta look at the price of land. We're talking, I could build a whole city on, like, a yearly salary oh, yeah, in Detroit. Detroit, easy. Tennessee, you're going down into the south, aren't you? So it's. It'd be expensive. I know it'd be expensive. I need a big plot of land. Like, if we're not okay. doing the whole Detroit City thing, right? Because, like, Detroit, okay. I was planning on being, like, kind of close to a Walmart and stuff, and, like, you know, enough to where if we had to go out in our big armored vehicles, then we could. But okay, so you need somewhere middle of nowhere, not gonna get any shit. Let's go to the old Appalachia. Mm, it's tough terrain. It is tough terrain, but if you build in one of the valleys, then you've got a natural border all the way around. We also have to consider how soon the U.S. government will catch up on what we're doing and kick us out. If they tried that with Appalachian people like a hundred years ago, and it didn't really work, right? So. <laughs> I was gonna say, just uh, the words "Ruby Ridge" are just screaming in my ears right now. I just want to go and make moonshine for the rest of my life. So I'm a bit caught up in them. <laughs> I could picture that. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> I want like a a cool like cool little city uh mike wants guns and matt wants moonshine and whistling dixie and knives and knives okay weapons we'll oh, say yeah. we've got knives and this <laughs> so what you're saying is me and mike would be it'd be a lawless society right you guys would be the downfall of my city <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I already have to find some police to actually keep you guys in check. Like, Put us in charge of the police force. It will be fine. Yeah. All I see is like, I'm sleeping happily in bed. All of a sudden, I just hear boom. And I call you up and be like, Matt, did one of your distilleries blow up? Maybe. <laughs> Accident this happened, mate. <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt will be blaming me. Yeah, my, Mike. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't an explosion. That was a bullet you heard. I was gonna say I'd have to call both of you. I'd be like, was that a distillery or was that tannerite? Oh, <laughs> Mike's out here setting up little dummy zombies in the middle of the woods, like boom, watching their heads blow off. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Pop that motherfucker like a watermelon. We already had a show where we got on the Ruby Ridge list. What? Which one? It wasn't last show, was it? Can't stand Cali. They're getting robbed blind by the state while getting robbed blind by the substance zombies. Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Floating City. I like that idea. Floating City's starting to sound good, but, like, we'd have to have, like, some way to have greenery on board. I couldn't live in a world without trees. No, I agree with you there. I do agree. Mike, you like bushcraft. You like trees. Yep. You would, you would enjoy it. Well, oh, technically, oh, oh, oh. there wouldn't be anything stopping us from, you know, say, say we, we buy up like an old aircraft carrier, you know, one that the government's not using anymore. And then we tear off the whole concrete upper layer where the, the you know, planes take off from and just replace it with... A hydroponic and, and like dirt system. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that way we could have food and fresh vegetables all year round. 
wouldn't have yep. to be we could be self-sustaining we could even have like a small population of like an animal that we could hunt well it wouldn't be much of a hunt aircraft carriers you think they're massive they're not actually that big mm -hmm. i know. you know considering you know a, a deer would need as much room as an aircraft carrier to even run around and be happy just one single deer let alone like a population of them we could do maybe a smaller animal we could do like bunnies well bunny rabbits we could hunt that might work you can always go with monk jack monk jacks are small how's that monk jack they're a deer oh they're about the size of a large cat i suppose what yeah, but if you look about monk jacks, monk jack, we get them a lot round. Yeah, we get them round here, mate. I've hunted them before. Not oh, legally, they're so hunt. cute! Yeah, I'd hate to kill one of those, but you know, I guess, uh, I guess you got to do what you got to do. They're actually considered vermin, round there. Mm. Really? Yep. Okay. Okay. They're so. Cute. They are cute, though. I have to say. They're like Compared mini deer. deer. I think of, like, when you think of vermin, you think of like rats and things like that, don't you? Yeah. And that just, no, that's quite actually quite cute. The nostrils freak me out. Yeah. If we just RGB a whole Nimitz class carrier, Nick would forget about the trees. That's what the tower is for. We got the whole tower. Right? That's plenty of room. Like, okay, simple rules, right? Mike, Mike's on the, the turret. Whatever, you know, just make sure... Because pirates are still a thing. We wouldn't sail it anywhere near Somalia. But, you know, uh, pirates are still definitely a thing. And, of course, if we show people that we have a good way of life, then, you know, we, we would in, have some intruders, I think. Some borders. However, Mike's on the turret. I don't know if you've seen a, a aircraft carrier's turret, Mike, but uh, I mean, they tend to be fully automated, but mm -hmm. it can shoot down a missile out of midair, and it, it's basically like a Gatling gun. Good. Yeah. yeah. So you're on, you're on weaponry. Uh, I guess libations will be supplied by Matt. Although we got to make sure he's in a, a fireplace area so it doesn't blow the whole thing up. Oh, well, oh no. we can run, we can run, we can run the ship on it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> a moonshine class ship here. No nuclear power. Um, we, we'll we'll I have an area set aside for growing shrooms. Oh, oh yeah. You, you can grow whatever you want. I don't care. If it grows out of the ground without any further processing, you can in ingest it. That's what my rule. Uh, I think uh, definitely shrooms would be a good idea, unless you're in charge of anything like loaded. Yeah, of course you can't be. Uh, well, okay, we'll we'll do it in shifts, right? So we'll we'll cover the defenses in shifts. If you're on shift, no imbibing in uh, any libations and or otherwise. And yeah, uh, yeah. once you're off, though, you could just pop a couple caps and go on a nature walk out in the deck. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mike wouldn't even have like a proper like stateroom or anything. He would just be out on the, the deck of the ship in a tent somewhere and he'd move around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be nomadic. Like, Mike, where yeah. are you at? Oh, I'm on the north end. Oh, okay. Or well, the front. The bow. That's it. That's it. Yeah. He's out. You know, the, there's like little ramps that go down at, like right after the catapults. There's like these little ramps and they have nets around them. Mike would be laying in the net like it's a hammock in the very mm -hmm. front of the ship. <laughs> I tell you what, them hammocks are fucking comfortable. Sitting itself and falls over the bow of the ship. We'd have like a little area where we could land a helicopter just in case we need some supplies or we need to bug out real quick from our, our place. We'd get Demo in there. Demo would be our resident pilot. He'd probably want to keep one of the damn catapults, so. No, Demo. He likes the hel helicopters, though, too. 
Depends what he wants to fire out of a catapult. <laughs> Mike. That could be a rifle. <laughs> It wouldn't need to be yeah. functional either. <laughs> well, it's not. I'm just firing him out of a catapult. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good fun. <laughs> oh, man. Ah. <laughs> yeah, we'd be uh, have our own little utopia. But, I mean, okay. So, the, the deck of the ship is not that big, but it's big enough. We could definitely have... A, a whole nature reserve, place for planting crops and food and stuff for the entire population of the ship. Yeah. The ship population is going to be under 100, because I can't stand more than 100 people in, like, ever, period. Mm -hmm. Reserved yeah. for us and our extended families if we want. Anyone else, not allowed. And that's it. Yeah. And no, I think that. We'll have our defenses, we'll work in shifts... And it's all going to be, you know, there's not going to be any money ever because there's no cost of operation considering, you know, we're just floating out there somewhere. Um, we have our own transportation in the form of helicopter and we, we have recreation. We can have like a place where we can go down to the bottom and like actually swim, like jump out of the little hatch and like you know, be able to swim in the, the ocean when we want to. Nope. <laughs> or not. Or you could just sunbathe on the deck, Mike. I don't care. But uh, we'd have staterooms for everyone that have luxurious accommodations. This is like Noah's Ark V2. Let's go. The thing is, 100 people on an aircraft carrier is a fuck all. Mm -hmm. Considering the average aircraft carrier probably takes... 2,000 people. Yeah. Eric would get his little, his, well, little, his giant kitchen. He could do whatever he wants in there. He'd love it. You know, we'd have, there's all the, you know, foresty bit on the, the deck would be good for kids to run around in and everything else. You got internet and Wi-Fi for me, so I can connect and play games and stream and do a, my thing there and we have communication with the outside world but we are not affected by anyone's laws we are in you know the middle of the ocean which means there no governing laws apply to us and uh, you know we we surrender our passports and everything else so we don't have to worry about dealing with any other country we are our own entity Ictopia <laughs> No, you just call it the undesirables. There you go. Boom. That'd be great. The, unde the undesirables. FTW. <laughs> exactly. And that can mean both meanings of FTW. For the win yeah. or fuck the world. <laughs> yep. Nimitz class comes stock with six kitchens. Oh, boy. You can rectify Blackhawks for private use now, too. Or, or recertify. I was thinking something a little lighter than a black hawk. We don't need a black hawk, you know. We could just get one go of those with little Apache. Apache. Go with Apache. Yeah, go with an Apache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Demo would up, love yeah. that one. Holy. He would absolutely love it. Mark could be quite happy sat in the back playing with the weapons. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. When it was like, when it was on the ground level, yeah. <laughs> Blackhawk yeah, is no. big enough to hoist supplies. This is true. We don't yeah. need that much supplies, though. Think about it. Like, we're very self-sustaining here. If you, you had 100 know. people and you had the rest of that whole deck is as virtually as, as fun and as for growing, mm -hmm. you'd have food left over mm -hmm. easily. Yep. Exactly, you'd grow enough to eat and grow enough to plant for the next season. Yeah. You'd be it would be self sustaining after probably the first two years. Easily. And then you could diversify into maybe growing a little bit of weed somewhere on there. 
Well, everyone could have their own private plots as well, if you think about it. We would have one big community plot, yeah. and then everyone could have a pl private plot for themselves, meaning that you could yeah. grow whatever the hell you want there. Mike wants to grow mushrooms? Grow mushrooms. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to grow weed? Grow weed. Don't care. Well, Do whatever you want. Need, oh, good weed. Yeah. The one thing we would need is what? a desalination plant on there. Yeah. Yes. But that would be cool. I mean, because you could take the seawater in take the salt out and store the water obviously on board yep almost as one well process yeah we have plenty of room plus we could do we could catch water too if we wanted to do that and clean it mm. yep why would you need to create clean rain water especially if you're over the ocean acid rain that's, like. true. that's true if you're, if you're out in the middle of the ocean then you probably wouldn't need to clean it <clears throat> Rainwater, or if it's over over anywhere that's like farmland, is pretty clear, pretty clean, easily drinkable. <laughs> they won't give you a yeah, live was, reactor. You would need fuel. If it was over London, I would not be drinking the rain. Just, just get the that paddles. Would give you, that'd give you acid ingestion. Uh oh, I think I'd rather drink the rain from Chernobyl. Than the rain <laughs> from London. Probably less fucking radiation in it, mate. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, we got a we got a good thing going here, guys. I think uh, I think we figured it out. I think we've got the, the solution to life. Every hundred people get their own aircraft carrier, and we just live out in the middle of the oceans. I feel like if too Go many on. people did that, though. How many aircraft carriers are even are there that are still floating? Quite a few, I'd have thought. Mm -hmm. Not that many, though. You gotta figure, the rest of the world is gonna have to be on their own. Well, a few people are gonna have to die, I'm afraid, but... That's no different to the governments we got now, mate. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Could we steal this aircraft carrier? <laughs> If someone knows how to start the engines, I don't see why not. <laughs> it's not just a key, Mike. Well, I, I mean, Mike's used to driving big vehicles. He's driven a bus, so it's not much different. Yeah, true. It'll be fine. Imagine him backing it up. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. Love to see the conversation of that to the police. Yeah. What was to you? Well, it was an aircraft carrier. <laughs> this was here when we got here. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Have you been drunk, you sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. If only things were so simple. Right now. Well, we've gone from buying up a few houses in Detroit all the way up to building a utopia on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> I mean, how long is it going to be before Chernobyl is radiation-free? Fucking hundreds of years. Uh, thousands, I think. Thousands of years. Well, I was thinking, if you bought some of the houses there now, mm. it'd be a future investment, mate. <laughs> Most of them are still standing. They'd have to be uh, patched up a bit, but, you know. Yeah. There's like roots of trees just going it. through walls. You buy it? Can you even? Well, I wouldn't want to be there right now. What do you mean? It's very much a point of contention in a certain conflict that's going on. So it seems. Yeah, I, I don't know what to believe of that whole conflict. To be honest with you, but. It's... Yeah, Chernobyl will be habitable again in about 20,000 years. Goo! I'll get a bit in now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Your great, 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 great grandchildren might be able to enjoy it. I don't know if that was even enough. Probably not. Oh, I don't think it was, actually. No, definitely not. Oh, imagine though, like fu the future of Chernobyl, like where 
finally it's ready to be habitable and people are like all right maybe I bet, I bet the land will be cheap the first people to re-inhabit chernobyl i must admit that is somewhere i would like to visit chernobyl. to be fair there's like still to this day almost constantly people there in the area yeah like yeah. They, they're building always building a bigger and bigger sarcophagi around the reactor mm -hmm. oh around the elephant's full yeah what they've got here is experts have said it will be at least three thousand years uh for the area to become safe while others believe this is too optimistic yeah. it is thought it is thought that the reactor site will not become habitable again for at least 20,000 years, according to a 2016 report. Dang. That's crazy, isn't it? That's wild. And this was all because the Russians in charge of it decided they wanted to see what would happen if we turned the safety off. Mm. That, no, that's genuinely, that's what caused it. They basically decided, well, if we turn the reactor safety off, that what happens? Um, well, we know what happened now, don't we, lads? Maybe we should have left that one alone. Yeah, probably not for the better, I would say. Anybody see the TV series they did on it? Dyer said yeah. they, they botched a test procedure. Yeah, it was a test procedure on the uh, on the safety mechanism that was meant to release extra water. Mm. They, they let that bitch get way too hot, and then it was exponential. And then, and then they panicked, and halfway through, sent somebody down <laughs> to the reactor to see what was going on. <laughs> oh, it's not funny, but it's yeah. kind of funny. Oh I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh because I know a lot of people died and uh, I'm not laughing at that. That was well, terrible. Okay, the Russian reaction to it was not the best. Their their it's plan was it. send guys up with lead sheets on them and throw a couple shovelfuls of sand into the fucking reactor. Are you kidding me? It's more the reaction of, oh shit, the reactor's burning. Uh, yeah, 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 you. Right, off you go. Get down there and see what's going on. No. <laughs> so, days after the initial uh, meltdown that happened, they had to send divers through the cooling tunnels mm -hmm. where, like, the the water would, like, go out of and go into. They sent divers in there to dive through the tunnel and up into the room where the elephant's foot was. That's where you get the first picture of the elephant's foot. Fuck that! <laughs> They said you could be, you could withstand about like, and I think it was like 10 seconds before your brain would just fry mm -hmm. after the initial reaction. Nowadays, you could be in that room for up to like a minute and a half, something like that, before you get any sort of uh, well, damage. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> Fuck no, no, that, no. dude. <laughs> no. Um, mate, I've done some crazy shit, but that's just like, no. <laughs> would I like to visit the town of Pripyat? Yes. Would I like to yes, go I to would. the reactor site? Nah. I'll view it from afar. I'd like to kind of get close-ish to it. I'd say about mile, mile and a half, maybe. Tops. Yeah, something like that. But I, I, I mean, there's been people who've broke in and like gone right up to it. <laughs> yep. Terrifying though. Oh. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Uh, I don't get it. The reactor had a oh. bad design flaw that made the overheating situation far worse than it should have been. Well, and I've just looked. Uh, what is the most radioactive place on Earth? And it's Fukushima. Well, right now, yeah, because they had a much more recent yeah. nuclear disaster. Yep, it's got here. Fukushima is the most radioactive place on Earth. A tsunami led to the reactors melting at the Fukushima nuclear plant. Even though it is nine years, even though it's been nine years, it doesn't mean the disaster is behind us. 
the Japanese government is actually thinking about dumping radioactive water in the Pacific. <laughs> yeah, because the cooling tanks and whatnot are all completely contaminated. Yep, and that was written on 29th of July last year. Fukushima is better contaminated, yeah, considering the reaction was wait four days before kicking everyone out of the town of Pripyat. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you only have to look at some of the footage of people. And don't tell the world uh, about it either. That's the other thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, don't say anything. No. Yeah, it's wild. There's like. It was, the, it, people the, were terribly burnt. The we, helicopter well, footage from days after the event, the helicopters flying overhead, and the camera people trying to get footage of it. It's all grainy and crackly and just it looks horrible because of the amount of radiation that's going through the, the film. Mm -hmm. Messing it all up. Yeah. Dude, don't mess around with nuclear power plants. Ooh. But, you know, they say dust, the dust from the initial explosion and fire was just coated the surrounding area. So, like... What are you Pripyat. The fallout, the fallout went all the way over into Wales. Yeah, that's why they <laughs> they are, they figured it something out. Someone at a like a research station was like, "Um, you guys notice that the air is like way more re radioactive like today compared to yesterday?" And it was like yeah. a week or a week and a half after the initial explosion that the air current pushed that air all the way up and over. To, yeah. uh, to you guys. I mean, I don't know how far it is from Chernobyl to sort of Wales, but I would have envisaged you're talking direct line. 1,500 to 2,000 miles. It's a long way, but it's got to be. Yep. And yet... Well, everything that was affected along the way. But the Russians have never sort of been bothered about that. They've just sort of, well, we'll ignore that. That'd be okay. Yep. Wild. <clears throat> scary. Scary, scary. Yep. Um, me and Nick are 3,000 miles apart if that helps with distance. Hmm. Just in the other direction. True. Well, yeah, but yeah. We're going to release some of the runoff water from Fukushima. It is massively diluted. Yeah. I mean, of course, you dump a few million gallons into a few what? How many gallons is the, the greater ocean? Trillions? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, but it's still the fact of what is it going to do with to things like the fish? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're going to start seeing Simpsons fish pop up around the area. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had that. We had that. that we, we know that the the Welsh lambs and Welsh sheep. Yes, I had to say Welsh and sheep. <laughs> <laughs> the, sheep were, the sheep were affected. Yes. Yeah. I was just reading that, but um, the cloud of radioactive fallout travelled far and wide, and even some 2,000 miles away in Wales caused major consequences, where in the region of 10,000 farms and 4 million sheep had government restrictors, restrictions put in place. Thousands of, thousands of Welshmen left, lost their sexual partners. <laughs> no! Oh, no. We said we weren't going to talk about the Welsh anymore. We were so good for so long-ish. I mean, we could talk about one Welshman who used to be on here. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're being nice. I haven't picked on him for ages. No, no. Mind you, he usually cries. He usually <laughs> cries. <laughs> No, no, just, no, no picking on people. Okay, that's not nice. 
No, I want no other pick on anyone. Uh, but it's the it's the long it's the long the the fallout <laughs> and what happens in the long run of these things, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're still being at like Nagasaki and and the, the Japanese, you know, from the Second World War, that it's still affecting people to this day. Yep. yep. Yeah, we just don't talk about that because uh, it was our fault. Oopsies. Oh, we 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 dropped pamphlets. We told you to leave. Well, yeah, I just think that was <clears throat> the whole Oppenheimer thing. And what did anybody think of that film actually? Before I finish this, I haven't seen it. I haven't yet. seen it. <laughs> okay, I won't right. say anything though. I'll leave you to watch it first. All right, I will watch it because it yeah, is something that it. interests me, and I do know what I will, quite a bit about. I will it. say, I will say, you won't be wasting your time. Okay. Oh, I mean, it did win best film, oh, didn't it? Sure. Pretty sure it won an award or something. I mm. was. I always get with films like that. I, I'm always like a bit. Am I going to waste two hours of my life on this? Is it going to be absolute shit? <laughs> the, the new Napoleon film is a good film if you're not into history. Fair. Because it is so far from the truth, it's unbelievable. Figures. But then it's film, isn't it? They have to, for a film, mm-hmm. has to be. You have to make it sort of believe, make people want to watch it, I suppose. And... Mm-hmm. Well, it's dramatized, right? Like, like with any historical account of something, like, yeah, uh, like Black Hawk Down or. Uh, zero yeah. dark 30 or something like that anything to do with military and government or anything like that has to be extra dramatized because no one likes to watch paperwork being filed or you know waiting there's a lot of you know waiting. What I love to <laughs> zero dark 30 is the fact that the americans you managed to crash a helicopter <laughs> not shot down it was untested it was wearing it was wearing a lot of big stealthy armor and completely untested especially in the circumstances of where it was landing okay Okay. we landed that bitch right in the compound we didn't expect the rotor wash from the walls coming back up and basically allowing it to not fly right and just tipping over and blowing up he he definitely landed it just the right way up who yeah. <laughs> plays Napoleon in the film, Matt? Uh, Jochen Phoenix, or Joshan Phoenix, depending on how you want to say it. I thought it would have been Warwick Davis or someone. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like, jeez. <laughs> so, movie magic, Mike. Movie magic. You know, all I've got in my head at the minute is a vision of of, of vaping with Vic with his hand in his coat. <laughs> it's Napoleon. No, no. Someone Photoshop that, please. Go. <laughs> vaping with Vic is Napoleon. <laughs> oh. Oh. I, got him, I got him for one the other week. He was doing his show and he fucking went into standby. Went into the spinny circle with him like that. And I went, oh, no. I went, that's because you ain't got anybody else on, you see, Vic. I went, you've broken it. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. Uh, I already did Napoli Vic years ago. Oh, shit. (laughs) See? Been done. (laughs) Napoli Vic. (gasps) Oh, amazing. (laughs) Everybody trolls Vic. I know, but he, he he takes it with a grain of salt. That's the thing. He, he has does. a sense of he humor. Does, yeah. yeah. But you gotta yeah, expect yeah, it. The thing is, he has got a sense of humor. You I'll have to that. expect that sort of reaction when you are a public fi- figure. You know. Yeah, but even so, Vic is one of these that can spot a troll for a troll, and a wanker yeah. for a wanker. Yeah. Yeah. He knows that 
his friends mean well and other people yeah, are just yeah. being mean for being mean. But, you know, I would have appreciated it if there was a li little more creativity in what the trolls were doing. Because, like, come on. That was stupid. That was bullshit. I think it's a lot of a lot of trolls now are just out there for being nasty. Aren't they? They're just yep. there to be nasty. Just let's cause some trouble. Yeah. Let's be let's be a little bitch. Let's know? let's interrupt everyone's good time and and make people miserable because I'm miserable. Therefore, everyone else around me needs to be miserable. I'm gonna insert myself into a situation where I can do that. No matter how many accounts you make or whatever, like. That's why I like Twitch a little bit more, because you can set it with a press of a button. I can have it set so that only moderators can chat, or I can have it set that only subscribers can chat, you know? So it's like, keep the riffraff out easily compared to other sites. It comes with the slew of negatives as well, but you know. I think of things positively, or I try to at least. <clears throat> You're always going to want that. Every site has negatives and, and positives. You're just, just picking the right one that for you, I think. Yep. Yeah. But, hey, we got to get the hell out of here. It's been over two hours. I got to pee. <laughs> it's been a, an interesting conversation. We, we actually came around full circle. We never do that. I know. Hey. It's been great having you on, Matt. Good to see you again. It's been fun. It's been fun, guys. We As will always. do this again. We will. And uh, we we'll have to get you on with Lee. Yeah, that would be cool. We got to get Lee on in general. Yep. But well, I think Lee's he's working nights at the minute, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Know. Yeah. 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 Because uh, Lisa was hanging out with us last night because she was uh, lonely. So. Yeah, she she gets uh, apprehensive about being. Oh, I don't blame her. Yeah, but we, I sh as I'm sure you know certain things, but that's all I'm saying. Um, but being on her own, yeah, it's not very nice for. Yeah, no, that's no fun. No one likes that. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll get you on again. We'll get Lee in here, Lisa in here. Th those are definitely on our very short list of people that we want to have on the oh, show. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll raid out of here. I think I know who we're going to raid. Someone very, very chill. Quite the opposite. Well, no, nah, we're chill. We just talk about random shit that can cause controversy, like conspiracy theories uh -huh. and, and things like that. But quite the opposite of us. Um, you fried for games like, no, no, no worries, Dyer. No, no big deal. We had fun. <clears throat> I, I, Dude. Chill and not long gone live. Yes, Jenny. Yes. Uh, Jenny knows already. Damn it, she's on to me. <laughs> but <clears throat> we have uh, we have a we have a good raid target here, so let's go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the conversation, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we do have a raid message if you want to copy and paste that. Um, and yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Hopefully, we could get G back here at some point. I haven't seen him on all day, so. I hope he's doing all right. No, um, Jake said he was in a lot of pain. Oh, okay. Right on. Uh, I haven't heard from him. That's why. Uh, I, he put a message in the Discord. Oh, shit. His health has been really shit lately. Like, really, really shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, kidney stone or something, isn't it? At the moment. Yeah, That's what he's thinking. It was kidney stone, and before that, it was... <clears throat> he had that dodgy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then on top of that, he also that he, he hurt his back even more, mm. like yep. wrenching about and whatever. So yep. he's had a right rough old time of things, bless him. Yep. So everyone, uh, send G some love, and oh, uh, yeah. I'll see you on the other side of this raid. Uh, let's see. If I type it right because I have to type it right, and there we go. All right. Bye, everyone. I love you all. Let's come live on a aircraft carrier with us and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Yay!